Hi there, everyone. Uh, welcome to Oregon Technology number 19. So today we're going to pick up where we left off last time, which was that I took a preamp circuit like this and I rerouted the piano and all of the trap outputs into this so that I could have a separate audio output and that the piano and the traps would behave uh, like I remember playing on the organ at Pizza and Pipes where the, all the percussions were out in the room instead of in the chamber. I got a lot of questions about the preamp and we'll get to that in a second but first let's look at some still shots I took. Now at the end of last the last video we found out that the piano signal was going straight into distortion which meant the signal was simply way too strong for the input circuit of the little preamp that I used, the little Devtronics preamp. So we had to drop a resistor in there to knock that signal down. Well, how do I determine the size of that resistor? Well, I looked through the schematics for similar situations where we had a signal output coming in and then it was going into a preamp circuit. What was the most common resistor value for that arrangement. And what I found was that 47K, 47,000 ohms, was the most common resistor. Well, I didn't have any 47K, but I had some 51K. And turns out that ended up being kind of perfect. And so I went and uh, I just soldered it in. It turned out that uh, the signal was just right when the two uh, potentiometers are about the same level well then we get a good even level between the traps and the piano and it's working just fine now before we get into what else I did let's take a look at that preamp a little closer now this unit um, is a kit that I built uh, back good grief uh, early 80s uh, it came from Deftronics which made kits for building your own analog electronic organ and this was meant to go with their individual oscillator setup and it's uh, two inputs and then an output a single output and the intention here is that it's marked low and high but that's not really anything to do with the frequencies that the preamp will handle or, or what it does Basically, the low octave input goes straight through, and the high octave uh, output goes through a loop for to add a, a tremulant module. Other than that, they're absolutely identical. Uh, for my purposes, I've got the piano coming in on the high and the traps coming in on the low. It doesn't make any difference. And I have just the uh, tremulant input bypassed and uh, everything is working fine. I got a lot of questions about this little preamp and specifically people wanting to see the schematic. Um, I need to warn you though that uh, after I got the preamp working well, the input of the piano side failed and it failed over a period of time. We started getting noise. I thought it was coming from the older circuitry in in the machine, but it turned out it was uh, the circuitry on the preamp. So this one I took out. I had two others and I put a, a new one in. It seems to be working okay thus far, um, but there may be some issue that is breaking down the input circuit on this uh, device. So before you haul off and try to build one of these, uh, you know, uh, think that through. Uh, at any rate, the other thing is I'm not providing you with a how-to type video. That's, that's not my intention here. My intention here is to show you uh, what I'm doing with an old instrument, and you can decide for yourself if you want to try a similar experiment at home. I have to remind everybody that, look, electricity is dangerous. And anybody who told you, oh, it's low voltage, don't worry about low voltage. Low voltage is safe. Well, that person is full of crap completely up to their eyebrows, and you really shouldn't listen to them. Let's keep in mind that an arc welder 
is a low voltage circuit and you can definitely get seriously injured and or killed by an arc welder so don't think for one second that just because it's low voltage that it happens to be safe low voltage in the context of like a toy train is relatively safe but low voltage in the context of an arc welder is potentially very dangerous so any rate here's the schematic and basically this little preamp circuit is based on a quad op amp that's what the ic chip is here and we're using two of those op amps as our input circuit and we have our attenuation here and then it mixes through these two resistors this is the um uh, po the insert point for the tremolo unit that was specific to Devtronics. I don't know if I have a schematic for that or not. Then we use our third op amp as a buffer circuit. And then the actual preamp is this circuit right here, the last, uh, the number four op amp. Um, the list of parts gives you uh, three, I think, three different op quad op amps that you can use and uh, you know there probably are equivalents available and I think that on this one that has failed probably if I replace this op amp chip with an equivalent it'll work just fine uh, this is an expression system so this circuit is not really uh, needed uh, in the final in the final uh, analysis of it um, I was asked if I could post the schematic and again I have to be very careful with that uh, because uh, technically this schematic has a copyright on it and um, I don't know that that's such a good idea uh, but again Devtronics has been out of business for 40 years it's uh, unlikely that there would be an issue with that what you can do is uh, look up online you can look up uh, just uh, op amp uh, audio preamp uh, circuits and you can find any number of circuits that are basically this exact same thing and you can get the full schematics that way um, there's also a parts list that came with the kit here it is and you can see that um, the quad op amp they give you uh, several different versions that are uh, compatible the rest of it is just resistors and capacitors uh, a few diodes I think there's a couple diodes in there somewhere probably and uh, then your potentiometers for controlling uh, the input but like I say um, this thing failed uh, on me and I just replaced it and I don't know if that's gonna hold up or not We'll have to wait and see. Now, the other thing I did when we uh, were looking at all of this stuff is one of the things that was done on later Rogers Theater Organ models was to put the Vox Humana with the tibia on the Leslie. So I started looking through the schematics at how I might do that. This is the tibia preamp and it turns out that there are a couple of points which the tibia preamp is intended to have another uh, signal coming in point b here this is indicating the 16 foot borden from the solo uh, filter uh, that does not exist on uh, this particular organ this same preamp was used for different models and so that point where you add a different voice into the uh, into that preamp circuit was not being utilized I looked over the actual circuit in the organ and it's all set up there it's got the resistor here for pulling it into the uh, tibia preamp so theoretically all I needed to do was get the Vox Humana output over here with a jumper wire and I would have the Vox Humana and the tibia running uh, through the Leslie speaker so let's see where did I put that 
Um, if we look over here, this is the stop network. And we've talked before about how we have our different signals coming off the main oscillator bank. Those oscillators always run. And then we have gate circuits. And then those uh, gated circuit, those gated tones are then sent to various preamps for to branch off into stops, and then they go to different filter circuits. So if we look at if we looked at our uh, gate circuits, uh, what ends up happening is the oscillator is putting out a square wave, and that square wave is either let through or it's converted into a triangle wave. And when it's converted into a triangle wave, it is referred to as pulse. This is the stop circuits for all of the pulse uh, generator outputs. So here we have our accompaniment eight foot pulse. So that means our triangle wave is coming in here. We've got a preamp circuit and then it branches out to several of these read um, read relays, our stop switch then closes the read relay and then the signal, the, the triangle wave pulse, as it's called, signal goes out to these various buses for down here we've got, uh, what do we got here? We got Vox Humana, Viola, Tuba, Canura, Post Horn, and Solitional. So what I had to do was find the point where I have my Vox Humana, which uh, before it goes into the, after it comes out of the uh, filter circuit, and take that output and put it somewhere else. And I think this is the one here. Yeah, here we go. So we have here, uh, from the pulse keyer, we have our Vox Humana. This is the filter circuit for the Vox Humana that shapes that triangle wave into the tonality that we need to create the Vox Humana. And then here's our output point. So I took this 47K resistor, disconnected it from the output bus, and then connected it instead over to the point B on the tibia preamp and voila the Vox Humana was over in the Leslie just as we wanted it and it sounds fantastic over there. So I also did a few other things by rerouting the stop switches uh, outputs like we see here with the read relays, this is the setup for the pedal. And then this is the setup for the diapason. And then we also have the setup for all of the um, so-called pulse stops. You can reroute, because all of these buses are, are right underneath on the actual circuit board uh, from, from these points, all of these buses. So you can change where this point is connected. So, for example, I didn't find the solutional very useful on the solo, but it would be nice to have the Vox Humana and the Canura over on the solo. Now, a previous owner had taken the um, solo Canura and output it to run the Vox Humana instead. Well, I decided I want them both over there. So I returned the Canura output to or the Vox, what had been changed to Vox Humana back over to Canura. And then I took the Solitional and took it and ran it to the Vox Humana. So now the Canura is a Canura. The Solitional is a uh, now the Vox Humana. And I even found a stop key in my collection of stuff to change that out. So now the solo division has all the reeds and it has the eight, the 16 foot tibia, eight foot tibia, four foot tibia, and the eight foot diapason. So it's a little more of a complete solo division. 
And you know, there's all kinds of things we can do like that in terms of rerouting the stops. Because in this case, we've got triangle waves coming into all these positions. Accompaniment, eight foot, solo, eight foot, great, eight foot, four foot accompaniment, uh, four foot great, 16 foot great. All of those come into, they're just triangle waves coming into these read relays. Where they go from there is is our choice. So basically, any of the stops can be converted into any of the other stops that we want to do want to use. Now, we've got the 33E sounding good. The useful percussions are, are doing their thing. The only useful tu tuned percussion right now is the piano. Uh, it's routed into a separate channel. The traps are routed into a separate audio channel. And we've got all of the reeds over onto the solo. Everything is sounding really nice. So what might I do next? Well, you know, it would be really cool if I had an oboe on the 33E. It would be really cool to have something other than the uh, harp circuit on the grate that is really just the tibia percussed, which isn't very useful because when you bring in the harp, you lose the tibia and it doesn't work that well. Plus the harp ends up being affected by the tibia tremulant. So if I happen to have the tremulant, the high speed uh, Leslie speaker going, then the harp is going to be more like a vibraphone kind of thing, and uh, which is not my favorite. And so there's other things that could be done, but I think it might be fun to experiment a little bit and see if we could get an oboe out of this instrument. And the thing is, how would we do that? Well, let's think about how these filter circuits work. To create an oboe, let's say you're on a Hammond organ with the draw bars. To create an oboe, well, what, what does an oboe consist of? Well, an oboe consists of a very strong second and third harmonic and a very weak fundamental. You also need a little bit of those upper harmonics above the third harmonic to give the oboe some buzz. So how do we do that with this type of oscillator filter synthesis? The typical thing is that we have oscillators that are producing a lot of harmonics and then we filter out the harmonics we don't need for a particular voice. Now, obviously, something like a Kenura or a post horn is going to have a lot of those upper harmonics left in, but maybe not as much fundamental. The oboe, of course, is going to maybe have a lot less of those upper harmonics, but it's going to be really strong on that second and third and really weak on the fundamental. So the filter circuit has to take out what we don't want and so if we look at different filter circuits, we're going to be doing basically the same thing regardless of how the organ is set up. Well, Rogers used the square wave in this case for producing uh, diapason flute tones and used the so-called pulse waveform, which is just a triangle wave. Uh, for everything else, your strings and your reeds. Um, so would, could we take a filter circuit from something different and maybe make that work? So let's take a look at this. This is the oboe filter out of uh, my Schober organ. And let's take a look at what we're doing here. We've got our eight foot signal coming in and then some of that eight foot is going straight out to our output which is right here and then right in the middle of that we have the this resistor is creating a proportion of direct to filtered both of these this is an induction coil and we have a capacitor here and we know that induction coils work as low pass filters 
In other words, frequencies below a certain point are going to pass through this inductor. Capacitors work as high pass filters. And so we know that frequencies above a certain point are going to pass through the capacitor. So we've got low pass, high pass, but they're both going to ground. So what that indicates is that this filter is taking frequencies that we don't want and peeling them off, sending them to ground, so that only the frequencies we do want continue on to the output. Now the Schober filter was intended to work with a stair-stepped sawtooth wave. Let me get some paper and let's take a look at what that means. Okay, so we know that the oscillators on the Rogers organ are producing a square wave. I need a better pen for this. Square wave. And that the keying circuit also converts that square wave into a triangle wave. The square wave gets filtered into diapason and flute. The triangle wave gets filtered into various reeds and strings. The Schober filter is meant to work off of a stair-stepped sawtooth wave. What does that look like? Well, if we look at a regular sawtooth wave, it's like this. So if we had an oscillator producing a sawtooth wave, that's what it would look like. You can also achieve it in a single oscillator divider network system by stair-stepping. So we have our fundamental, and then we have our octave above that, and then we have our octave above that, and we have our octave above that. And so the net result is more or less a sawtooth wave like this. Well, what's really going on here is we have, in if we're going to use organ footages like we would on, say, Hammond draw bars uh, or, or on stops, 8 foot, 4 foot, 2 foot, 1 foot. And they're arranged because this is twice as fast as this. We're going to get two peaks. Because this is twice as fast as this, we're going to get two peaks relative to that. This is twice as fast as this, so we're going to get two peaks relative to that. So what we've done is we've got all of these harmonics kind of built in. And so to get various voices, we have to filter some of that out or maybe sometimes exaggerate some of it, depending on what we're trying to do. In a typical single oscillator divider network where this is what's done to create a waveform. The original oscillator doesn't have much in the way of harmonics. A square wave will naturally produce the fundamental and the second and third harmonic. So eight foot, four foot, two and two thirds. The Sawtooth wave is going to produce a different set of harmonics, and so is or, or the triangle wave and the sawtooth wave are going to produce a different spattering of harmonics, depending on how the waveform is, is generated. Rogers tended to use oscillators that produced a lot of harmonics. The typical oscillator that's used in a single oscillator divider system does not have a lot of harmonics, and that's why they do this stair-stepping thing to get those extra harmonics in there. So, could I take this Schober filter and run one of the waveforms off the Rogers 33E through it and end up with an oboe sound at the other end? Well, it kind of depends. Now, if we look at our square wave, it's going to have the 8, 4, and 2, and 2 thirds. If I were to greatly reduce my 8 foot signal and leave my 4 foot and 2 and 2 thirds signal strong, 
that's going to give me an oboe like tone it would be the same with this or this if i have a weak eight foot and a strong four foot two and two thirds or second and third harmonic it's it's going to produce some kind of oboe-esque tone so it all comes down to what is the harmonic content of these waveforms compared to the stair step thing well the only thing i could do is try it and maybe it'll work better off the square wave or maybe it'll work better off the triangle wave i don't know it was designed for this but you know the end result is going to be more or less the same the only thing we can do is try it and see what happens i might set this thing on fire or you know <laughs> but it might be worth a try uh just to see what what would happen on the 33e would that give me an oboe voice or could i go through and modify the schober filter or can i find an appropriate oboe filter <laughs> circuit um, with my access to roger schematics and then just build that filter circuit there were guys back in the day that built various filter circuits for rogers theater organs so that you could add voices they call them voice cards so putting that oboe stop onto the 33e might be an interesting thing to try and we'll see what happens now the reason I'm interested in putting an oboe stop on it is that if we did that, then we would have the same, basically the same rank layout as a Wurlitzer 216. The Wurlitzer 216 had an orchestral oboe on it, and I'd really like to have that, but a, a sound that's closer to an oboe horn would also work. That would give me more of a Robert Morton sound out of the 33E. But we'll see what happens if I decide to try this. So at any rate, that's our look at what's happened with the 33E uh, so far. I don't think I'm going to do a lot more to it. I will try out the oboe experiment at some point, and I'll take pictures and let you know how that worked out. The uh, For now, I'd really like to just sit down and play it because I've got it sounding good and I'd like to make some music on it and so hopefully we can uh, produce some videos and recordings making music on the 33E and I've got some other projects in the pipeline uh, some of them are related to Hotwork but that's all of course organ technology stuff so we've got more potentially more 33E stuff coming up and we've got other more modern organ technology stuff coming up so Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.